Okay, in some of our previous lessons, um, we have been solving for equations, but we are looking sometimes to find out a bigger range of things by saying something like at least equal to 400 or at most equal to 700 or whatever our value is. And when we use those words to indicate more than or less than, that's called an inequality. Um, so that's what we're going to be discussing in lesson 3-4, starting on page 329. And we're going to be doing um, some of the classwork here um, and reviewing a little bit some more tools to solve inequalities. Um, an inequality right here in the middle of the page on 329 is 2 less than 5. And that's a true statement because 2 is less than 5. If we use an inequality with algebra, um, with an algebraic statement, x is greater than 3, then the variable quantity represented by x is more than 3. So just like in equations, when we the solution to an inequality is the set of all numbers that make that set true when uh, substituted back in for the variable. So we might have more than one answer here, unlike with the solving equations, we may have only had one answer. So um, a number that makes uh, x greater than 3 a true statement could be any number that's greater than 3. So something like 5 would work. 5 is greater than 3. But you could really plug in any value that was also greater than but not equal to 3. Um, a number that makes the statement false would be if we chose a number that was less than 3. So if I said something like 0 is greater than 3, that's a false statement. Um, so that would make the statement false. In many ways, solving inequalities is similar to solving equations. For example, the first step we identified in solving an equation was to use the distributive property and combine like terms to simplify each side of an equation as much as possible. The same is true for our inequalities. So after we do that simplification first, we're going to continue to use the tools that we learned for solving equations. Um, the goal is to isolate the variable that we're solving for. So let's remind ourselves of the tools that we used for solving equations. They're right here at the bottom on page 329. It says, first, we could multiply, that was tool number one, was that we could multiply the same non-zero number um, to both sides of the equation and that would be one tool we could use. We can divide by the same non-zero number on both sides of an equation. Tool number three that we discussed was that we can add the same number or expression to both sides of an equation. And number four was we can subtract the same number from both sides of an expression, or sorry, same number or expression from both sides of an equation. We're gonna be able to explore here if we can use those same tools for solving inequalities. So let's find out. Let's turn the page here. Um, do they work for inequalities? So let's find out. Meaning that they we're finding out if they work if it keeps the statement true if it was true at the beginning or if it keeps it false if it was false at the beginning. So we're going to use less than to explore these rules um, but it also works for greater than or greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. So the first four questions here, we're going to have a comparison of less than in between, but it really could be any of the um, inequality symbols, greater than, greater than, or equal to, less than, or equal to, or less than, which is what we're using. Um, so the first thing that we have is the statement, the inequality statement that they have here, 10 is less than 20. And we're going to explore this for four different scenarios. 10 is less than 20. That is a true statement. So we want to make sure that it ends up being true when we do some of these things. So what we're going to do first is add 8 to both sides. So if I add 8 to 10, I'll get 18. If I add 8 to 20, I'll get 28. So we're adding 8 to both sides. And now we want to see what symbol goes in between. 18 is less than 28. So that's the statement that we have. Um, for number two, we're going to add negative 8 to both sides, which is similar to subtraction, but we're adding a negative number. So that takes us to the left on our number line. So when I um, add negative 8 to 10, I get positive 2. When I add 8 to 20 on the right side, or negative 8, excuse me, if I add negative 8 to 20 
on the right side, I'll get 12. And then we want to see what comparison symbol would be appropriate in between there. 2 is less than 12. Let's try subtraction. So those were our addition. We added a positive number, then we added a negative number. Now we're going to subtract a positive number from both sides and subtract a negative number from both sides uh, for number 3 and number 4. So let's uh, subtract 6 from 10 and we'll get 4. If we subtract 6 from 20, we get 14. And then the comparison symbol that should go in between is still the less than symbol because 4 is less than 14. Now it says to subtract negative 6 from both sides and it says to be careful and that's because when we subtract a negative it's really like adding. So when I subtract negative 6, so that's a minus, minus a negative 6, that's really like adding 6. So that's going to be 16. When we subtract a negative 6 from 10 and subtracting a negative 6 from 20 takes us to 26. And the comparison symbol in between is still going to be less than. So we're going to fill in the blanks here on this purple chart based on the things that we just did right above. Adding or subtracting the same number to both sides of inequality does not change the direction of the comparison symbol. We started out with a less than for all four of those examples, and we ended up with a less than. So this is does not change the direction of a comparison symbol. Using, using inequality solving tool number one, um, which is to add or subtract a number from both sides, and then we're going to graph um, the the inequality on this number line that's kind of disjoint here. It shouldn't be, but that's how it showed up um, on this copy. So we're going to treat this x minus 5 is greater than 9. Um, to solve this, we're going to use that inequality tool of adding 5 to both sides, which does not change any uh, the comparison symbol. So that means that our result is going to be x is greater than um, 14. So we started out with a greater than, we're going to have a greater than, and putting it on the number line just means that I write where 14 is, which I'm going to use this space here. Really, it would be good to have a reference point here, but that's going to be an open circle because we're just using greater than, and it's all the values to the right of 14. All the values, um, whole numbers and decimals and fractions that are all to the right of 14, and we left that open circle there to indicate that it does not include 14. Next, we're going to do t plus 11 is less than or equal to 5. And so in order to solve this, we're going to use our subtraction, which means that we do it to both sides. So if I subtract 11 from both sides, I'll get t is less than or equal to negative 6. And so when I plot that on my number line, since it's less than or equal to, I'm going to put a closed circle. Ooh, that's supposed to be all filled in at the number 6. And again, it would be good to have a reference here. But those are going to be all the values less than or equal to negative 6. Sorry, I should have a negative there. So, all right, let's see what else works here. So let's write a verbal description for the solution sets of the two inequalities that we just that we just had. So any value of x is greater than 14 will cause negative or x minus 5 to be greater than 9. That's the one on the left in the purple box. Um, that's what that means. And so we can write the statement. They want us to do a statement for t plus 11 is less than or equal to 5 um, using our solution, which was t is less than or equal to negative 6. So we can say, following the same pattern, we can say any value less that, uh, any value that for, sorry, for t that is less than or equal to negative 6, and this is going to be a lot here, will cause, because I'm following the same model here, 
t plus 11 to be, this is our original statement, to be less than or equal to 5, which was on the right side of our original statement. All right, let's try this again for multiplying. So we know that for multiplication, um, the tools worked for when we solved equations. Let's see if they work when we have inequality symbols. And we're going to follow the same pattern here. We have 10 is less than 20. And we're going to follow four examples here to see what happens to the comparison symbol in the middle. So if I multiply both sides, 10 times 2 is 20. And I multiply 20 by 2, I'll get 40. So multiplying both sides by 2 gives me that. And if I want to compare them, 20 is still less than 40. Now, if I multiply both sides by negative 2, I'll get 10 times negative 2 is negative 20. That's a 20 there. Um, and then 20 times negative 2 is a negative 40. So when I compare those, negative 20 is actually greater than negative 40. So that's something to note, that that changed the direction of our, sim of our uh, inequality symbol there. Let's try to divide and see what happens. So if I divide by a positive 5, that will give me 2 when I divide 10 by 5. If I divide 20 by 5, that leaves me with 4. And 2 is still less than 4. If I divide by a negative 5, 10 divided by negative 5 is negative 2. And 20 divided by negative 5 is negative 4. And so I have to be careful here. Negative 2 is actually the greater value when we compare it to negative 4. So negative 2 is actually greater than negative 4. So what does that mean? That means, we'll turn the page here, that means that if we multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a positive number, like we just did on the last two exa four examples, that the direction of the comparison symbol stays the same. So I'm going to try to fit all that in here. Stays the same. But if we multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, then the direction of the comparison symbol actually changes. You may have discussed this in a previous class where you say you got to flip the sign. Flip the inequality sign when you multiply or divide by a negative. So let's see if we can do some examples here in box, uh, in this purple box, just like we did on the last tool. Um, so using the inequality symbol that, or inequality tool that we just had where we're multiplying and dividing, we're going to solve these and then graph them. Um, so to solve 2x is less than 10, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. If you divide by 2, you'll get x is less than 5. And since we divided by a positive number, we don't have to change this, the inequality symbol. And this is just a less than, so if I put my little 5 on there, this is going to be an open circle, and it's all the values to the left of 5. Here I have negative 3z is greater than or equal to 12. So when I divide by negative 3 on both sides, I'll get um, z on the left. And on the right, I'll get negative 4, but I have to flip that inequality symbol. So now it's really z is less than or equal to negative 4. And that looks like this on the number line. I'll have 4. I fill in my circle because I'm going to include negative 4, excuse me. And it's all the values to the left of negative 4. Um, here I have 1 fourth t is greater than um, negative 3. If you recall, we can just multiply by 4 over 1 on both sides, which is a positive value. So if I multiply by 4 over 1 on both sides, I'll get t is greater than negative 12. I don't have to change my inequality symbol, flip that over, because I multiplied by a positive number. So these are all the values greater than negative 12. So negative 12 is here on my number line, and it's all the values to the right of negative 12. Here we have negative 1 third b is less than or equal to 2. So I will multiply by negative 3 over 1 on both sides to get rid of that fraction on the left. And I'll have b 
is now greater than or equal to negative 6. And the reason I flipped that sign was because I multiplied by a negative number. And so that means if I put negative 6 eh, right about here, and it's going to be all the values that are greater than negative 6. So in summation, we have the steps to solve any linear equation linear inequalities, that's a tongue twister, is step one. We're going to simplify both sides of the inequality just like we did with equations, um, either distributing or combining like terms. Then we use tool number one, which was the adding and subtracting to rearrange the inequality so that we have the variable term on one side. Then we use tool number two, which is multiplying and dividing to change that coefficient to one, like we did in the last little purple box examples. Um, but just a note, make sure, and I'm going to highlight this, or I'm going to underline it, I think, um, make sure that we change the direction of the inequality if we multiply or divide by a negative number. So that is key.